Every culture has its legends, and every sport has a culture. In the world of fishing, legends are molded by time and experience, and they embody a vast bank of knowledge that people who share their passion only dream of having access to. Unfortunately, the best fishermen are also often the best liars. My name is Captain Quinn, and when I am outside doing what I love with the people I love, I am happy. I enjoy exploring, spinning yarns, and fishing. I'm a father, and when I'm not fishing, I'm also a husband. Five years ago, I set out on a journey to explore how much our happiness is connected to healthy environments. So I moved my family to northwestern BC, a place with wild rivers and rugged landscapes. My approach was simple. Venture deep into wild places, interact with people who are living lifestyles that honor their connection to the environment, and of course, chase wild salmon and steelhead with my fly rod. What I found was that the healthier our environment is, the happier we are able to be. My son! <laughs> this is Cast Northwest. I've been fishing my whole life, and sometimes I think to myself, or I wonder if if I'll ever get bored of it, and I'll ever hit a point where it just stops interesting me, stops exciting me, and I'll, I'll lose my will to keep engaging in this activity. But then I, I meet people, and I talk to people who have been doing this their entire lives, who have been fishing up here the same waters 30, 40, 50 years, like Fred Philpott, Bob Clay, Rob Brown. They've created lifestyles that allow them, if they choose to, fish every single day and they've been fishing their entire lives they they know these stretches of waters in and out they've caught you know they've probably stopped counting how many fish they've caught and how many hours and days they've spent on the water and i when i talk to them or when i fish with them they still get excited like it's their first time fishing um, and I think that that really is a true testament to how dynamic this activity is, this sport. I feel really grateful that I am engaged, invested in something that can provide me with excitement for the rest of my life. Uh, my name is... Fred Philpott. I was born in Duncan, British Columbia. I grew up there until I finished high school and university in the summer of 1961. And I came back here because there were so many big fish and I loved the country. So that, that's, that's why I'm actually here in Terrace. It's not the um, success rate that keeps me fishing. It's the fact that I like to be there. I love my house and my property. I can walk down the back and just sit and look at the Skeena River. Like even now, you get in the shelter of the trees and you can sit and look at the ice and you just marvel at the country that we live in and, and how it changes from spring to summer to fall to winter and so on. You still have those glasses? I kind of reveled in being able to do that, where I could walk out my back door, not have to drive anywhere, go down to the river and catch, well, you catch everything, but uh, sockeyes, pinks, cohos, steelhead, and, and walk home again. It's quite a feeling of satisfaction in being able to do that. It's not a journey, you know, it's 
part of your life and part of your backyard. Totally. What's your favorite fly to fish with? Do you have one? I prefer a waking fly or a little, basically a little trout fly. Probably my most favorite is a little caddis trout fly that Rob showed to me. Today I hooked that 30 pounder that I was telling you about, uh, that I think was 30 pounds. I was fishing with Rob and he was fishing behind me. He was fishing behind me. I hooked five fish that day, one of them was a 30 pounder. He hooked and played 13 fish. Fishing behind me on this little wee caddis fly. They were feeding on caddis flies that were rising to them. Wow. And I mean, it was an amazing uh, um, lesson in fishing for me. And um, so I guess that's my favorite fly. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that 30 pounder ended up getting away in the end, didn't it? Yeah, I had to swim for it, so I'm around a couple of, because it went out of the pool on me and down into the next, through the rapids to the next pool. I waded out, I had my wetsuit on because we'd been, I was fishing with my wet, I didn't have waders that time. And so I kind of swam, paddled, floated around the logs and then back down the beach and... While fighting the fish? While fighting the fish and then <laughs> Got it, and the fish was pretty tired by that point. So I had him played out, and he was laying on his side in that much water. You know, it was half his, he was dry. And Rob was going to go down and just measure girth and length to get an idea because it was huge. And uh, then the fish just rolled, and the fly just poof, out over my shoulder. Of course, the fish is gone, Rob. And then he thought he could maybe catch up with the fish, but and it sort of flopped and flopped and wiggled and so on. So we agreed that it was conservatively 25 pounds and Rob said it could easily have been 30 pounds. There was no way, you know, that much yeah. fish is probably two pounds, yeah, yeah, three yeah. pounds. <laughs> it sounds like that might be the inspiration for the, the final scene and a river runs through it. You yes. floating down the river <laughs> with the fish. I think a lot of people out there in this world dream of making their hobby or their passion their job. I think that's a goal for a lot of people. It doesn't always work out, but in some cases it does. Uh, for me it has, and I feel very grateful for that. I'm uh, an entertainer and I share my passion of, of fishing in the outdoors with people. And it's come around to, that's what I do uh, as a job and a passion. So when I'm out here, I'm doing both, and that's very exciting. With Bob Clay, he is recognized around the world for his craft in making bamboo spay rods. And that has come, that was born out of his passion for fishing and getting out here and connecting with the environment. So I find that incredibly inspiring. And you know, it does sound cheesy to say, but if you do pursue your passion, then things do have a way of falling into place. Uh, my name is Bob Clay. I live here in the Kispiox Valley, which is north of Hazelton, BC. Hazelton's where the Skeena and the and the Bulkley join, and the Kispiox River comes in just a little bit to the north. Uh, the Skeena system is known for its uh, big steelhead, sort of the last stronghold of wild steelhead. Bamboo is is something that takes you back. Like for me, when I first started, uh, fiberglass was the thing. Like I said before, but. The older guys were using the bamboo. And just to look at those rods took me back in history a little bit because back in history, that's what they used, you know. And they're also very beautiful to look at. He may have never fished a bamboo rod in his whole life, but he sees one and he goes, man, yeah, that's what they used. And it brings you maybe to that Atlantic Salmon River or to that Steelhead River of yesteryear where they were using that type of thing. It brings you back to your roots. So that's why they use it. And also, it's a very beautiful material. It's got a soul in it that when you look at graphite, which is an inert material, it really doesn't have that soul wood or bamboo. If you look into it, you can see the grain of it. You can see the beauty. It's a, it's a bit 3D. And then there's also who made it. So those people can connect that fishing rod to who made it, if it's me or another rod builder. You know, someone that they, they think, well, they're, they're, they, they put all their knowledge and everything to make that the best fishing rod that they could.
So this is your workshop. Right. This is where you make your bamboo rods. Right. And on the walls are the thousands of photos of steelhead. Mostly steelhead, yeah. Because this is where I live. Most of it's the Kispiox. There's some other rivers in there. People that I've known over the years. Friends, family. <coughs> Friends, people that I've guided, people that I've met here on the river. Like I was saying before, you know, the kids got a chance to meet all different people from all different walks of life. That's really Coming cool. here for one reason. The fish. That's right. <laughs> bamboo. Mm -hmm. why, why, bam bamboo? why bamboo? Man is always looking for better and better materials, right? So he started looking at all the different woods that he had, right? And so he used the best wood. And as he got to go around the world, that opens up a new door. There's other woods around the world. And bamboo, they found, wow, that's an incredibly strong. It's actually stronger than steel by weight. No way. Yeah, by weight. So if you're gonna make something out of wood, this is the strongest and lightest wood to make it out of, period. This is it. Bamboo. That's it. I read in a National Geographic that bamboo makes up 99% of the giant panda's diet. Right. They don't eat this type of bamboo. They do. do you ever... There's a, there's a thousand different types of bamboo. Is there really? Yeah. So there's a lot of bamboo. So this bamboo is not wild. So you don't have problems with giant pandas eating your client's rocks. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> what so, kind of warranty So this offer? bamboo is, 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 it comes from a region of China. Okay. And it's the strongest type of bamboo. How many rods have you made? Well, I think like 400 and something now. Wow. Yeah. So I usually make a good year, like this year I've made 30 rods. Uh, next year I'd like to make 24 and the next year after that 18. So I'm sort of not making as many now because I'm getting to be semi-retired, right? But when I... You're going to be using them more. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I see, you know, the anglers go through, a, you know, a... Uh, an evolution. Mm -hmm. First, they want to catch any fish. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, I've never caught a fish before. I want to catch anything. I don't care how big, how small it is. Yeah. So they're after, basically. And then, and then they want to catch a whole bunch of fish. Right. 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 And then the evolution is they want to catch that fish. So it's always that, you know, I'm going to go there. And today might be the day I catch the world record. And they're, you know, they just got their tunnel vision, eh? Mm -hmm. And then they don't enjoy the other things around them as much, eh? Yes. Yeah, to me it's all about the experience. If I catch a fish, that's a bonus, right? I like catch fish just as much as anybody else. But I try not to think about a big fish because, you know, I've, I've seen people, like, the big one of the biggest fish I've ever caught in the river was the first steel that a guy ever caught. So, like, what does that say? He just happened to be at the right place at the right time. And, and what about the, the social element to it too? Like mm -hmm. when you're fishing with someone or doing anything outdoors, right. there's an honest sort of pure interaction that takes place that you really get to really appreciate that person exactly. and yourself. Right. So you know, they say a good fishing partner is hard to find. I don't know if you found yours yet. Like I can go fishing with my, besides my wife and my kids, there's a few people that I really enjoy going fishing with. And I can't sort of really sort of put your thumb on it, what it is. But there's something special about being with that person. And you really don't care what the hell happens, right? It's just that just you're out there enjoying the day with that person. Absolutely. It's really neat, you know. I don't have very many idols. I never have Spice Girls. Backstreet Boys, Ariel from The Little Mermaid, and Rob Brown. Um, Rob Brown, I didn't know this, but he actually grew up on the Lower Mainland. That's where I'm from, South Coast. And he migrated up this way, and just as many other people who love fishing have. And he's become... an icon for younger generations to idolize. He is really good at fishing. He catches a lot of fish and he has a lifetime of stories shaped around that. And in those stories, a bank of knowledge people like me are thirsty for. My name is Rob Brown. I was born in East End, Vancouver. I moved to Burnaby as a kid. As a, a young man, I was hired for a job in South Hazelton, and 
that brought me up to ski now. That was 38 years ago now. Devoted angler. I love fishing. I like cross-country skiing in the winter. I like not having many people around. And uh, I like rivers and mountains. I, 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 I don't know. I guess we're hardwired to be outdoors. And I just love being outdoors. Years ago, I wrote a little uh, piece or... A, uh, maybe it was a letter to the editor, the local paper, and, and they came back to me and they said, could you write a regular column? So I started doing that. Uh, I, 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 I studied English in university, and I've always been good at writing, uh, or at least that's what my teachers told me. And, uh, yeah, it just seemed logical, and it was an extension of writing a fishery diary, you know? And then I just started writing for magazines and newspapers and I've continued to do it for the last 20 years. Well, li living up here, well, when time, uh, I, when I went through stressful times, everybody goes through stressful times in their life to varying degrees. Um, fishing saved my life. I just went out there by myself or with a friend and uh, got into fishing and calmed down and eased my troubles. It's great. It's great therapy for stress. <laughs> the best days I've had have been out in the winter by myself on snowshoes or skis, just going in and maybe hooking one fish or maybe none, you know, and seeing the attractions of animals in the snow. In the spring, um, you know, when everything's broken up and the winter's finally ended and I'm catching the first cutthroat trout, you put yourself back in the natural cycles, like fish are feeding on mayflies, mayflies are hatching, bats are feeding on insects late at night, and you come in and you become part of the equation by hunting those fish. You, you introduce yourself into that environment as a predator, but you don't kill any fish, or you might kill one or two. But being involved in those natural cycles is really energizing and uh, good for a person, I think. This is where I'm absolutely fascinated mm -hmm. by you and your fishing stories in that you established a baseline from when you moved up here 40 years ago. Yeah. You know what the fishing trends have looked like as an effective fisherman, I'm sure you're, you've become more effective than you were when you first started and your ability has changed, but you have it mapped out from 40 years ago yeah, till now. That's, that's true. That's a tremendously valuable piece of science. Yeah. It's always got a positive bias. Yeah, that's true. You know. <laughs> that's true. And fishermen tend to over-exaggerate. Oh, we know that. Yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Remember the steelhead shaking in your back by now? Big waves. I fly to her tail. Oh. <laughs> 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 Big black mouths they get, hey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, it's, it's, it gets so, some of them are like football, so you get so many eggs, eh? Hey? And so will you get bull trout in here too? Yeah. Bull trout and dollies. Really big. They do have the spot. He does have the spot. Does have the spot. I don't, I, of course, I've got my catch and release tool in my in pocket. Your pocket. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know if they have a link out there. But he was here. That eagle was here. Oh, my. You've obviously, you're Rob Brown. Yeah. You've obviously heard of Roderick Hag Brown. I do. Another fishing legend yeah, yeah. of his time. Oh, yeah. No relation? Uh, no, no, not at all. No. You're big into music. No relation to James Brown? No, no. I'm guessing. No, no, no. you can tell that by skin color. And what about Charlie Brown? Yeah, uh, Ch Charlie. <laughs> yeah. No? I, actually, I never liked peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go.
feel very fortunate that I have had the opportunity to meet and interact with fishermen uh, that I consider iconic in the community. Uh, Fred Philpott, Rob Brown, Bob Clay. Uh, I've learned a lot from them and it's been inspiring uh, hearing, to their, hearing, hearing their stories that they chose to share with me and, and picking their brains about you know, the finer details of fishing that, that one would collect after spending a lifetime of fishing these waters. My only hope for myself and for my children is that we also get to look forward to a lifetime of fishing opportunities in this beautiful watershed.